Minutes after midnight, having been kicked out of a bar in Ilford, Jordan McSweeney began hunting for a victim. The attack was brutal, and it was sustained. He attacked her with a savagery that is rarely seen, much less in a residential neighborhood with people in the vicinity. And the reason for his anomalous carelessness when it came to claiming her life is perhaps even more terrifying than the murder itself. To put it simply, he didn't care. He didn't care who would hear or see him or whether someone might call the police. He just wanted to kill. But under the merciless grip of his fingers was the neck of Zara Alina, a 35-year-old aspiring lawyer who had done nothing wrong, who was significantly smaller than him, and who was doing her best to stay safe in a city where there are plenty of men like him to be scared of. He didn't care about that either. As he walked away from her lifeless, half-naked body, the silence of the neighborhood was overwhelming. But a ping is heard, and Zara's phone, which had now been thrown over a neighboring fence, lights up with a message from her friend, Barmini, whom she had just been with, asking, You're home, hun. Just past 2.30 a.m. on the 26th of June, 2022, Zara Alina was found on a pavement close to her home in Ilford, London. She had been bludgeoned, abused and was hardly breathing. She had been waiting to die. Her belongings, which she had neatly packed into her bag, had now been strewn all over the place. Her home keys, ornated with two purple hearts, never to be used again. A woman who had walked onto the scene gave Zara CPR until paramedics arrived. She died in hospital later that morning. According to the case's prosecutor, the murder went as follows. The defendant saw her, decided to follow her, and was determined to assault her. He approached her from behind, grabbed her around the neck, and dragged her into a driveway. Despite being only yards from a public street and from onlooking houses, the defendant attacked her with a savagery that is almost impossible to believe. He repeatedly kicked and stamped on her head and body. He tore some of her clothes from her body in order that he could assault her. And then he attacked her again, kicking and stamping on her face and neck, and returning several times to continue the brutal violence. The victim had been dragged to a driveway where she was strangled until she was unconscious. The police officer, who discovered the CCTV showcasing the moment Alina is assaulted, also recalls the coldness and savagery of her attacker. You get the sense of the ferocity of the attack, how brutal it was, and it was brutal, and it was sustained. But even with multiple accounts of how the murder happened and what the killer was like, questions still remained unanswered. Firstly, considering the populated area that the murder took place in, why did no one jump to the rescue of Alina? Secondly, could the killer's motive really have been gratification and an unwavering thirst for blood? Authorities believe that there were no witnesses. After all, the attack happened at night and most people were asleep. Moreover, the sheer brutality of the attacker, had there been any witnesses, might have caused them to look out for themselves. And, regarding Zara Alina's bloodthirsty murderer, the answer was that, sadly. The killer had no motive besides his own satisfaction. In this strange attack of disproportionate brutality, it turns out that Zara was just another victim to the killer. In the wrong place, at the wrong time. The killer was identified shortly after the police came into possession of the CCTV footage. The clips were quickly circulated within the Metropolitan Police, and one officer came forward with a name, Jordan McSweeney. He had gotten out of jail only nine days before the attack. Detective Wellams, who worked the case, immediately went to the fairground of Valentine's Park where McSweeney was working. When he asked other workers to identify McSweeney, Wellam said, Lo and behold, yes, they said, that's Jordan McSweeney. 
And then the next question was, do you know where he is? And the answer to that was, yes, he's in the caravan asleep. That was how quick it all took place, Wellams recalls. Jordan? 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 Jordan McSweeney? Got cups on, yeah. <laughs> Can they stand up for us, mate? Just tell him, just tell him. You're under arrest for the murder of a female at Cranbrook Road. Along with McSweeney, who police said was surprised by his arrest, authorities found even more damning evidence in the fairgrounds ticket office. A plastic bag filled with McSweeney's bloody clothes and shoes from the night before. In the backdrop of children laughing and families enjoying their day at the fairground, McSweeney was dragged out of his caravan and taken into custody. McSweeney refused to give details of what he had done, but as more CCTV was uncovered, it became clear that Alina had not been McSweeney's initial choice of victim. She was simply the most unlucky out of all the women he had preyed on that same night. At five past midnight, McSweeney is thrown out of an Ilford pub, and his hunt begins. He is seen following a woman for a prolonged period, even following her into a shop. After about 20 minutes, however, time in which the woman is seen clearly changing demeanor as she realizes she is being followed, she runs down a side street and enters a house. Around 2 a.m., McSweeney spots another potential victim. He tries to catch up with her, quickening his pace, but the woman enters her home safely. Relentless, McSweeney tries finding another woman to prey on. Only minutes later, his third and final victim catches his eye, and it's Zara Alina. He was not letting this one escape him. Turns out McSweeney had been a repeated offender since the age of 13, with 28 previous convictions for 69 offenses. He had left prison nine days before June 26th and was supposed to be on probation. But, after not attending his appointments, the police went looking for him. They didn't find him at his usual residence. Within 24 hours, Zara Alina had been murdered. It is rare that we hear of a murderer as brutal and savage as Jordan McSweeney. A monstrous mind, completely devoid of remorse, he had been playing the system for more than half of his life. How could a repeated offender, aged 29, and who had been committing violent crimes, particularly against women, since the age of 14, have been on the streets for so long? McSweeney appears to have escaped justice more than once, particularly when looking at his behavioural pattern. He had no remorse or hesitation, and he was known to police. Considering all this, how could he not have been psychologically evaluated or subjected to a stricter probation regime? Could Zara Alina's murder have been completely avoided? Regardless of whether McSweeney should have been allowed freedom or not, considering his violent nature, what is clear is that the law has let Zara Alina's family down on more than one count. On the day of McSweeney's hearing, the killer refused to leave his cell. Alina's family was denied seeing putting her face onto the name of the man who had stolen their daughter and niece away, and there was not much the police could do about it. McSweeney was not the first offender to have succeeded in not showing up in court. Kochi Selamaj, who killed 28-year-old primary teacher Sabina Nessa, also refused to appear in the dock. Similarly, Emma Tustin, who had killed her stepson, six-year-old Arthur, also refused to leave her cell. McSweeney pleaded guilty to two counts of murder and assault, and was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 38 years. But, especially considering the fact that Zara Alina had been a stranger to McSweeney, how can the law not force these offenders to at least live the shame of their horrific crimes? What do you think should be done in cases such as this? And do you think Alina's tragic death could have been prevented? Let us know in the comments below.
If this video piqued your curiosity, make sure you check out our other cases and hit the like and subscribe button. We work very hard to put out quality content and are very grateful for your guys' support. See you next time at the Dakota.